Right, good. Apparently this time I actually am live, basically, just now if you're on um, and you're not watching the stream back. Basically what happened was I started live streaming. YouTube says, there's an error for live streaming service. Would you like to retry or would you like to cancel? So I clicked retry a load of times, didn't do anything. Click cancel. Just as I click cancel, the stream started and then it, like cut it after five seconds. So I had to go into all the options to actually close the stream properly because they don't make that easy if one crashes. Weirdly enough, you can't just stop the stream. Um, and then I've started again. But it seems like the stream's actually started this time. So I thought I'd do an earlier one today. That way I don't have to be around in the evening um, at a certain time. So, all right, everybody. So playing something you might find interesting, an old US Airman's Radiac. Um, and I've got it working by putting close to the original voltage of batteries in it. So if I do test, that's where it will just do the circuit test. As you can see, the needle goes all the way across. And if I do read, the ionization chamber warms up and then it levels off to about the lowest setting on there, uh, ready to take a radiation reading. So um, I'm really pleased this worked because um, I bought it from a UK seller because if I bought one of these from the States that was confirmed to work, it would be like over $100. So it's about £50. And... Um, for something made in the 1960s or whenever these were, these are really lightweight and handy. This particular one, I believe, is from 1970, judging by the serial number, but I might be wrong. But, yeah. Uh, it was just on eBay. There was a guy who randomly had one in stock, you know, just somebody who seems to sell random junk items, and they just randomly had a Radiac, and they had no way of testing it because you need obsolete batteries for it. So, um... This isn't a Geiger counter, by the way. It's a really small iron chamber. These are really, really cool how these work. I'll open it back up again so people can see the insides because these are kind of fascinating. Um, but yeah, uh, I'll do a proper video on it at some point, but I was just really pleased to get it working. So um, it wasn't all that hard. I just put on my bench transformer to start with to dial it up to the right voltage and check it was all running properly. And then I just had to bodge batteries into it. Um, 0 0.02 millironcgen, so that would be, um, well, it's 0 0.02 roncgen, so that would be 20 millironcgen, all the way up to 200 roncgen um, per hour. So it's actually a very nice range. Um, Range-wise, it starts off lower than, say, for example, a CDV uh, 715, but it ends at a lower range. But this is actually a really practical range. It's kind of a shame more of these weren't common in the US because this kind of fits the nice range of where it's not quite as sensitive as a lot of Geiger counters. But it's actually, you know, um, goes up to quite a high range. All right, Richard, hope you had a good time. Uh, is your gym open then? Or is it your home personal gym type thing? Because I thought gyms are all closed, weren't they, at the moment? Okay, that's interesting. Do you know what the sample is, Planes? But Because um, I might be able to guess what the... Ah, home gym. I might be able to guess what the... Um, Activity is, but yeah, the bear egg doesn't go all that high planes. The bear egg only goes up to like 10 microsieverts, um, or like one or two millironcgen as the top end of its dose, because the bear egg is more to just tell you if something's above background radiation. Um, what the one that's that's tomorrow, WG, if you mean the one where I move the needle on the CDV, that's tomorrow. Okay, so <clears throat> right, there's those batteries out. So if I lift this up. That is the little ionization chamber on this. Absolutely tiny, isn't it? It looks like a battery. But that's the ion chamber on this thing. It's really that small. It's quite amazing. Also, I ought to be careful because um, we'll test the bear egg on it. But notice how that glows green there. Oh, I don't want that on strobe. Hang on. Notice that green glow. What do you think that is? Yeah, it's amazing hype. I'm, I was really surprised. I thought it was going to be the size of that Type 75, but yeah, it uses that. That's the iron chamber there. Um, yeah, it's radium. So let's just test it with the bear egg. Um, which side of the bear egg has the Geiger Muller tube on it? I'm trying to remember. It's, it's actually quite a low amount of radium on there. It does glow lovely in green, but yeah. Never mind, it, it's like I said, there's a bit of radium on there, but it's a very small amount. Yeah, the bear eggs are really nice. Um, 
But yeah, so that's its tiny little ionization chamber that looks like a battery. I've not done a proper test on this yet, but I'll show you how I've rigged this up to work. So yeah, that's the top section. That's literally all there is to it. But what surprises me is if they could make these in like the 1960s, why they didn't do more of these in like the CDV range? Because this is ideal, really. The range this covers, 20 milli Rontgen all the way up to 200 Rontgen. Yeah, the thing I like with the Bereg hype is that as much as, yeah, it doesn't have a very long, big scale on it, I just like the fact it's colour-coded, it's kind of retro. You know, you can get the batteries for it easy enough, because it just uses watch batteries. Um, and, you know, overall it's kind of a nice bit of history combined with something that's functional, and not all that bulky or heavy. CT12 doesn't have a drinking tube. Um... The FM12 is technically a better mask for a lot of people. I just prefer the CT12. But yep, Caleb just answered you that. I'll get the bottom section open for you in a moment as well so you can see the um, guts of it. Oh, not the guts, how I've rigged the batteries up. I did post a picture on Discord, but... Oh, dropped the thing. Yeah, this... If you, So anybody in the US... Um, if anybody's in the US and they want a good radiation meter, if you can get one of these and power them, especially if you can buy them cheap, because apparently in some like US surplus stores, these used to be like $30. Uh, these are actually a really nice range on these, and I don't see them breaking easily just because of the fact that it uses a closed little iron chamber inside. Um, yeah, the nice thing of iron chambers compared to Geiger's is that iron chambers um, don't need very much voltage at all to run. I was reading into this, and you can run a basic iron chamber off a 9 volt battery without any step up circuitry. So it is kind of, you know, quite interesting how iron chambers can, you know, run anywhere between like 10 to 50 kind of volts or something. Whereas obviously a lot of Geiger Muller tubes need like 300 to 600 volts running through them. So, um, oh, that's all right, the Soviet cucumber, it's a good mask. Uh, if you want to look at porn or whatever, don't do it on my Discord, you know. There's plenty of places for that, just PM people, you smut, if you want to do it that way. Computer, it was one I had built by CyberPower, but it's a Ryzen 3900X for the um, CPU, when that was like the brand new best CPU you could get. Um, and the GPU is, oh, I'm trying to remember the name of it now, because it was just AMD's quite well-priced one at the time I got the PC. What? Yes, Electric, you're on about what I've got here. This is a Gamma Dose Rate me Meter radia Radiac Meter IM179U, if it focuses on it. Let me flick the this light on. Hang on a second. There we go. So, that's the full name of it. But Radiac Meter IM, oh, and it wants to defocus now. Brilliant, just brilliant. There we go. I am 179U is its name. <clears throat> I can try that in a video hype, but seeing as it's 200 ronk and I'd struggle with that. Cool planes, good luck with doing a video. But yeah, let me um yeah, if you're in the US, apparently you can sometimes still get these really cheap. They're, they're not cheap to import from the US. Right, this is how I've rigged it up, and it seems to work quite well. So a 1.5 volt watch battery combined with a lithium 3.7 volt battery. Um, so that makes 5.2 volts. Um, it, I think it's meant to run about 5.5 volts, ideally, but it seems to work fine with that. I'd rather undervolt it than overvolt it. You know, you get a slightly low reading that way, but you don't break anything. So that's going to focus. So you can see I've wedged two batteries in there. That that makes the shape of the old obsolete battery compartment. And it just uses a single 1.5 volt watch battery on that side. Ah, $50 for one. I would get one for that price. Because, yeah, like I said, you can, you can rig these up to run pretty easily off of just batteries. Because it's not like the really old ones that needed, you know, five different obsolete batteries. Um, so, yeah, that, that's how all of these run. Um, so obviously, yeah, you just have that there, then put the cover back on. Um, I've not put my thumb on it, but it's definitely not getting dangerously hot. Um,
Oh, that's interesting, Hype. I didn't know that, but yeah, I suppose it makes sense. But I've not noticed it getting too warm. But this, the thing is with this, which is, I suppose, quite good, is this doesn't run um, until you um, press the button in, and then it closes the circuit again, um, which is done to, you know, make the batteries last longer. Yeah, I suppose what I could do if I ever wanted to change the design hype is... Um, what was I going to say? Um, just tape together quite a few watch batteries and then just put the spacer in so they fit properly. There'd be quite a few ways of doing it. It's just you need to get it as close to 5.5 odd volts as you can with combinations of batteries and try not to go over it. Yeah, if I just... Um, Close that back up again. All right, there we go. So, yeah. So, test, that's the, the, for the test bit, that's the bit that uses that single watch battery. I think originally it was a 1.3 volt, but I've got a 1.5 volt in there, and it seems to work absolutely fine. I assume on the old battery, it probably, the line stopped a bit earlier, but that's all that one does, is it just powers the needle to move. Um, and then, yeah, the read one is when it uses the combination of the batteries. And then that's what powers the ionization chamber up. So then once you power the ion chamber up, it basically settles, ready to take a radiation reading. But yeah, there you go. So yeah, this is a surprisingly nice light bit of equipment for... Um, you know, one of those things. But yeah. Because that's what surprised me of these radiac meters is because, as I said to Hype, when I originally got this, I thought that was going to be the Chinese Type 75. Um, you know, I thought it was going to be the same size as that because I thought the Type 75 was kind of a rip-off of it. Yeah, thank you, Snozz. Yeah, don't forget to like it. There's, um, I said, this is just an earlier stream today just because I'm don't want to be sort of available in the evening too much, you know, but um, yeah, so with the Chinese Geiger counter, I was actually assuming that um, it was going to be the same size and weight as this, but it's not. It really isn't. Well, I suppose Geigers do need a lot more step-up circuitry. Um, because Geigers run on a much higher voltage, but yeah, both have pretty much the exact same scale if you look at that. Although I suppose that's just how a log um, logarithmic scale would go up in numbers. 0 0.02, 0 0.05, 1, 0 0.2, 0 0.5, 1, 2, 5, 10, 20. See on there, it's actually the exact same scale. But yeah, so there you go. Also, when because hype's on, I keep wanting to do a video on that modern Chinese one I bought off of you, the FJZ05, whatever it's called. But guess what? I can't find it. I've got it in a box somewhere, and I can't find it, even though I used it not too long ago to take some actual readings because it you know works fine. But oh, there we go. But, But yeah, I'm really surprised at this, just how nice it is for something made in like the 1960s. I assume these probably has cost quite a lot to make at the time, but yeah. I'll have to do a proper video on this going into detail, but little ionization chambers, for something like this, I think they're actually better than Geiger Muller tubes, especially for measuring gamma radiation. Um, Right, but anyway, let's talk about something, shall we? I'm all right, Briggs. Yeah, I think the problem with it, Hype, is I've probably put it on a shelf somewhere and it's merged in because it's such a good square size with whatever's on the shelf. But I'm all right, thank you for asking, Briggs. Um, didn't get up too early. You know, got up to find that the postman had delivered some cool shit like this. Um, I'll get a video filmed a bit later. Very, very thick lead or lots, lots of water, Joshua. The main the main way of stopping gamma radiation is just be as far away from it as possible. Uh, something called inverse square law. 
So basically, every time you double the distance, you quarter the dose. So for example, let's say, uh, let's work with easy numbers. Let's say you have a 100 Ronken per hour thing that if you're touching it, it's 100 Ronken per hour, right? If you were one centimeter away from that, it would then be probably 25 Ronken. It's hard to know exactly on the starting thing, but then once you then go to, say, from one centimeter to two centimeters, doubling the distance, you're quartering the dose again. So it then goes from 25 down to, what, seven something would it be? Or probably a bit less than seven Ronken. And then again, go to, from two to four centimeters, you quarter the dose again. So um, that's, there's some, it's, I need to do some videos on this at some point, but yeah, inverse square law, the safest way of being safe from gamma rays is just get away from it as fast as possible. Yeah, it's gone completely back to normal now, Hype. Unfortunately, my therapy, as much as I've taken it apart a few times and tried to clean it, I can't get this dose lower than it used to be because the issue is this is... Um, permanently gone to about 0 0.5 microsieverts now, where I guess some radionuclide got in the case of it. Um, so close to the GM tube, it gives a high reading, but the wall-based Geiger counters or whatever, so for example, with this um, Peugeot, if I turn this one on, I've got one on my wall, this will, um, when this gives a reading, this should probably go to about 0 0.25. Oh, that's going off now. Oh, uh, it's dropping down already, I think. Right, well, we'll keep an eye on that, because, yeah, that's a bit higher. Mm. This was the hoodie, though, I had to wash, like, three times to get um, it back to normal. Yeah, it's dropping down there. Um, but, yeah, I'll keep an eye. I don't know if it's just because it's picking the radium off of that, but it shouldn't be. Unless I've got something under my fingernail or something. A bit worrying. You weren't listening to what I said, Azad, did you? I said it's because I've contaminated it. Hello, Gretchen. You're right. So, yeah, with any Geiger counter, if you basically put them on a check source or whatever and get a radionuclide or whatever into them, even like pitch blend with uranium dust, it's going to fuck with your readings. That's why... It wasn't weeks ago. All right, Azad, you're talking shit. If you're that fucking stupid. It was like Saturday with the rain. Fucking hell. But now, like I've said before, if you want to take an accurate reading of a Geiger counter and not have the numbers mess up, what you actually have to do is keep them in a plastic bag constantly. I can't be asked to do that. But the point is that learn how these things work before you start sounding like a fucking idiot on, on them. If, um, that's all right, Gretchen. It's just one of those people who doesn't understand physics, and it gets quite frustrating. It wouldn't matter which guy you counter it was, right? If I say, for example, that's all right, Gretchen. If I had, um, let's say I bought a $1,000 whatever U.S. Army little radiac dose meter. Um, or example, I used just one of these, for example, right? I know this is a broken one, but let's just say I had one of these. I had it turned on. I took a measurement with it. And Absol Vazad and Zajin is still spamming the chat so he can fuck off as well. Um, let's say you had the most expensive Geiger counter in the world. You got contaminants in it and you couldn't get them out very well because they're like microscopic little bits of radionuclides. They're always going to fuck with your reading. It's not a very hard concept to understand. Oh, that sounds nice. What flavour curry is it? Is it just a generic spicy curry? What's what's in Essex? Um, oh, he says, Calvin and Hatch. I've been to Calvin and Hatch. There's a video on my channel about it. But yes, Calvin and Hatch is pretty interesting. Um, yes, it, just outside of London, isn't it? Just into Essex, Brentwood. Um, but yeah, Calvin and Hatch is pretty fascinating. There's a few bunkers like that in the UK. But yeah, it was raining when I took them out for the readings hype. And I put the therapy in a puddle. A bit of water's got into it. And that's dried with a bit of residue. Um, I've not been to the York one, sadly. If I went to York, I'd definitely go again. But obviously, at the moment, none of us can go to this sort of thing because they're all closed. There's there's one... Um, 
Yeah, exactly as hype says. But yeah, sadly, there's people that don't understand that. That's what I used to, as we all know, make condoms for these things where people used to essentially have like a condom around their Geiger counter so they could just take it off and bin it. But yeah, remember I had to wash this hoodie like two times to get this back to normal radiation levels. And that was just standing out in the rain for a minute. So yeah, I put this in a puddle, obviously not deep enough that it was going to fry the electronics from sitting in a puddle to take a reading. And then, yeah, guess what happened? A radionuclide gets in. Um, it's hard to get out. And then apparently it's my fault for liking this as a Geiger counter because, oh, ooh, you can't clean it properly. Well, you can't with most of them. It depends what you want it for, Caleb. But for something like this, I would say yes, mostly because iron chambers, you can run on a lower voltage. Uh, so you need less step up circuitry and stuff like that in them. And iron chambers actually reflect um, the kind of energy of the gamma rays going in. It might be hype. I'd have to desolder it. And I don't really want to do that for now. I'll just know it's always point, you know, point three of a micro but higher than it should be. I might try some compressed air on it actually again at some point. Um, but the easy way of explaining it, Caleb, is a Geiger counter doesn't know what a dose is other than what it's calibrated on. Yeah, I'll do that eventually, Hype, when it's fully out of the guarantee. Um, that sounds good, Briggs. But yeah, so regarding ionization chambers, it's because they actually know how active something is. Not not very well, Mope. It's it's lower than what it was the other day. Um, but I'm going to try compressed air on it at some point. But, um, yeah, so keep going off topic. But, yes, the point is an ionization chamber actually does measure the amount of ionization of the air, whereas a Geiger counter doesn't. Um, mostly eBay, Rap God's official, something like the cesium check source I bought, the like one with all the documentation and that, that was from the place I linked in the US that sells them and you can buy them internationally as long as they're legal in your country, but you have to pay a lot for shipping. Um, good guy counter for noise, Rumbo, you mean as in ticking away? Um, CDB 700s in the US, uh, they tick lovely, Soviet... Um, What's it ones? Uh, DP5 series. Uh, the rate meters make a nice ticking noise, but I've not got a probe attached to mine at the moment, so I can't demonstrate it. But these, these, you know, do the classic really loud Geiger ticking. Ah, uh, so yeah, you want one like the movies. Yeah, I'd say get a Soviet DP5 or a US CDB 700. Um, or a rate meter if you're in the UK and you can get them cheaply. But... Yeah, I've been to quite a lot. Um, I've been to outside of the UK, you know, places like Scotland and Wales. I have been to Portugal, Spain, France, Germany, Austria, um, Norway, Finland, Poland, the Czech Republic, Slovakia, Greece, Hungary. Um, have I been to any others? I've been to a lot of places in Europe. Sadly, I've not really been further afield than Europe. Yeah. All right, for a budget, Rex, there's only one thing I'd recommend that's really cheap and they actually work is these. They're not really a Geiger counter as much as it says Geiger, but they're a little diode you put in your um, phone like that. So let me just clear my notifications off and then I will demonstrate it for you. So you either use it on, um, they come with an app just called Smart Geiger that's free, but I would recommend buying one called Radmeter as it's a lot better. Um, so there you go. Uh, let's change from counts per second. Because the thing with Radmeter is you can use a different measurement. So let's click it. So you can see, you know, the different measurements you can have it in. So let's go on. Let's go on grays, actually, because I like grays as a unit. So there you go. A micro gray. It will take a little minute for the um, diode to calibrate properly with this app. But yeah, for the price, these are actually very good.
your fineness will probably drop down to about 0.2 to 0.3 microsieverts and stay there. But these definitely work with samples, as I've demonstrated before. Let me see, actually. Can it pick this bit of radium up off of there? Not really. That's the weird thing of this, unless this is a post-radium model. Because I said it glows like radium, and these were supposedly painted with radium. But this one, um, you know, doesn't seem to set any of my Geigers off. The detection range of these, I think, officially go up to 200 microsieverts, but they actually do more than that because I've tested them, you know, done stress tests on them. But um, it needs holes to detect beta radiation, Pepper Pig. But a speaker's a different thing, isn't it, than a Geiger counter? It's a false equivalence. I'm trying to think if there's any Geiger counters I've got that are waterproof. These nuclear industry ones aren't. Um, some of the military ones are definitely more water-resistant, but they're a lot more rugged. Oh, yeah, right. CDV715 is actually an iron chamber, not a Geiger counter, though. But yes, it is It is water resistant. They're designed to float, aren't they, these? I've never tested it, and I don't know if I'd want to. Maybe I'll test it with one of my broken ones. But yeah, supposedly these actually float, but knowing the weight of these, I actually kind of doubt that. But the aluminium casing in these is designed so they actually float. All right, Peppa Pig, I've got a job for you. Rather than shitting on the therapy, name a better Geiger counter for the price. Oh, wait. Because at the moment, it kind of seems like there's an anti-eco-test um, thing going on at the moment with several people all shitting on the therapy. Because every Geiger I've tried so far, I've not liked as much as the therapy. But of course, if you want to recommend a better one, please do. But I'd, I'd wait for you to actually recommend one, not just say, this is badly designed. Ah, oh, cool, Gretchen. Did you get one for a good price? But it's an excellent mask. The thing is, GS Electric, I want there to be a better Geiger counter than the Therapy around its price range, but there just doesn't seem to be. Because, like, again, I've when I've played with a lot of the other ones... Yeah, it's a very basic interface, isn't it, Hype? It's, it's not as bad even, actually, as some of the little pocket decimeters I've used. But, yeah, it's the, decim the interface on that could be a lot better. But, yeah, but the thing is, even, like, my GMC or whatever they call GQ Geigers, they're not waterproof. They're actually even flimsy in the therapy, judging the cases on those. Um, but this is the thing is... I just don't think there's enough of a commercial demand for a really rugged kind of modern Geiger outside of military use. All right, yeah, you've got your Trump dollars. I forget Americans are getting those, so yeah. Yeah, example, something like the FSZ1003, when I find that again, hype and do a video on it. In many ways, that is better than the therapy. You're right, it's a bit bulkier. Um, but again, yeah, that, that's going to be more rugged and strong than the therapy. But again, yeah, it's it's not the easiest thing to find, and that that's actually more of a um, military thing again, isn't it? Because I know military spec stuff is going to be a lot better than civilian spec Geigers. But I imagine the Radexes and all the other similar small Geigers have the same issues. Weirdly, GS Electric, there are kind of newer CDV seven hundreds. Not actual CDV 700s, but there are more modern British, um, not British, sorry, American Geiger counters that were made by companies like, um, what ones like, oh, what's the name of them? I've looked at them quite a lot. It's not Bicron, it's from the others. Ludlum? Ludlum. Yeah, there's like Ludlum ones which are built to the same sort of design style as the CDV 700s, but have bigger ranges.
Which British helmet, uh, William or Willis? Sorry, there's some which are very good, some which are awful. Um, against chemicals, ravens, flies, or against particles? Particles are last pretty much forever. Chemicals, once they're out of date, you can't really trust them. Uh, you're asking how long is a piece of string question there, ravens, flies. Against particles, it's not really going to expire unless you use it in a really, really dusty environment. Against vapour, if you've got an expired filter, there's no point trusting it. That's all right. It's, but yeah, it's the problem with a lot of filter questions. It really is the how long is a piece of string question where somebody says, how long does the filter last? You know, wow, that's a very, very broad question for something that might be very, very specific. Yep. Rate of breathing, what the style of filter is, how old the filter is, how well sealed it's been, what it's being used against. There's so many variables. Yeah, let's just say you want it for corona protection. It'll be fine for that. Don't worry about it. That's that's the easiest way I can sum it up. Right, I'll use the actual Smart Geiger app, which I don't like as much. But um, there we go. So that's jumped up, and then it will go down a bit in a moment. But how the Smart Geiger app works is it basically bases counts off of a um, thing. So each count um, gives a micro sievert thing, a bit like how a normal guy would do it, really. But yeah, the room isn't really as radioactive as you might think looking at that. Because uh, if you look at the one on my wall, 0 0.26, um, which is a bit higher than normal. But as you can see, it's, it's trending downwards again now. So again, you know. Oh, it's 0 0.18 now. I'm not for the work helmet, but yeah. I don't know what a British bunker helmet would be. British helmets are called the Mark 1, Mark 2, Mark 3, Mark 4. There's debate if the Mark 5 helmet was a thing. Mark 6, Mark 6A, Mark 7. And then the um, current helmet, which is when they buy under license, the um, revision helmet. Well, the one mounted on the wall means I can always see that Geiger. Um, and it's because the battery compartment was crap on it. So it only runs properly off a of USB now. But the reason I'm saying I like that Geiger counter look is that, you know, I can just literally have it running off the PC power. And it's just behind my monitor when I want to look at it, you know, so I can do that and see it. Yep, I'm, I'm still only getting a quarter of what an airline pilot's exposed to. Yeah, Virtus Revision Battle Skin. It's got a stupid name, Briggs, hasn't it? It's a very good helmet, got a stupid name. But yeah, as you can see, this one is normalising now as well to um, closer to what that other one was saying. But yeah, these, these smartphone Geigers, as much as they're not really a true Geiger, they are very good for what they are, I think. Um, what as in, what can go to the highest dose, as in, you where it would keep running, Black Nash? Probably my MGP, whatever it's called. It's like one of these little decimeters. It's an old nuclear industry sort of armed police type decimeter. And that goes up to, I think, something like nine sieverts, which is over a thousand Monken. The point is, it's the kind of thing, if you are actually reading it at that range, you're already dead. <laughs> I was just going to say that, yeah. <laughs> just non-stop beep at you. Do you know what the dose is on the International Space Station hype? I'd assume it'd be slightly over one microceiver, wouldn't it? Yeah, because I think Briggs, the problem with a lot of the other Virtus like revision stuff, wasn't it, was that a lot of the vests and that improved in some areas and then kind of went backwards in other areas. But yeah, the helmet's a very good helmet, though, but it's basically just a spin-off of the current US military helmet, isn't it? Um, Probably 10 plus years. Um, IZ4Y01. Um, what's my favourite among my collection? Maybe my Martini Henry now, but 
Um, it it kind of depends what you're looking for, though, because, again, you know, masks, my favourite masks, my CT12, even though it's not my rarest. You know, with Geiger counters and that, my opinions change on those. What's the Russian modern one, planes? Because I know they have the um, ID5, whatever it's called, which is just kind of an updated uh, DP5. Um, but do they have, like, a better modern one than that? Right, because the police might be watching Rap God's official as much as everything I own is legal, we won't, we won't start talking about those stuff off of what I've got, just in case somebody takes it out of context. Um, and I don't know what the most I've ever been exposed to. Probably some sort of x-ray I've had done, you know, when I was younger. Would be a lot more than just playing with a check source. I'll have a look at that, Blacknish. I suppose I could go on to AliExpress and look at ones I've bought before and know are okay, or if I know that are crap, and ones that I don't know about, or ones that look dodgy. So that's a good idea for a video. Um, would be pretty useless, I imagine, Gabby, if it's one that's actually like a toy mask or an airsoft mask. Um, Brody helmets were actually very good in terms of protection, but obviously they cover your head like that. Um... So Brody helmet, Mark one or Mark two helmets, pretty simple liner system. Uh, which is the front of this helmet? That way. Yeah, they're very simple helmets. Oh, ow, that really hurt. Mm. Yeah, the. Oh, um, it's the Terapeda Bluetooth one, isn't it? The black one. Yeah. Yeah, they're all for Peach. But yeah, the um, the interesting thing with Brody helmets was they were actually... Um... Oh, yeah. Six months being exposed to 2,000 millisieverts is pretty crazy, isn't it? Um, well, that'd be two sieverts, wouldn't it? Fucking hell. Yeah, sick getting exposed to two sieverts in six months, potentially. Fucking hell. Yeah. Um, but yeah. The nice thing of Brody helmets, or like Mark 1s, Mark 2s, is they're actually made from a really good steel from when they were made. Um, I guess you uh, didn't understand last time somebody asked that, Royal Anderson. I said I wasn't going to answer it. Um, but yeah, the um, Brody helmets were a really good steel. This is the funny thing is lots of people are like, oh, in World War I, the Germans had the best helmet, where they actually didn't, because as much as the German helmets gave much better head coverage than the Brody, the steel they were made from was apparently atrocious across a lot of the GM, like, 18s or whatever they were called, helmets. Um, so, it's not that I'd be arrested, Black Nash. It's that you have to be very careful with the context certain things are taken on here. Especially if I was then to start joking about radioactive things. Because, as I said, for the people who didn't know, or didn't hear me say, last Tuesday... I had a visit from the CBRM police. It wasn't very serious. It was just because I'd done videos on radioactive stuff. They wanted to, you know, check into it a bit. So that's why I want to be very careful what I say on here, because while everything I have is legal, um, you have to be very careful that what you're saying isn't taken out of context or somebody who doesn't know the law then starts reporting you for something, you know, and then it just causes more of a ball ache. Um, it is that they are watching because they've come to see me, you know, and they were talking about my YouTube channel. Um, but yeah, but yeah, the, the actual steel quality of these is much better. If you want an old German looking helmet that's made from much better steel, you're actually best getting the Swiss M18 helmets because the Swiss made them from much better steel than the Germans did. They'd work fine with pretty much any gas mask these because of how they seal to the head. They're not close fitting like old helmets are. Notice that big brim there. Hype, Hype says hello to the UK police from East Asia. I don't know if they watch all the streams, it, but yeah, they've they've obviously watched some of the videos, but I think I'm on like one of those very sort of low seriousness watch lists in all honesty, because I think what a lot of it was, was basically what I will try and explain is in the UK, um, our radiation laws are very strange. Basically, if you're a company that's employing people, 
there can be very strict rules on radioactive substances, you know, like exposure to staff members, how you dispose of it, how you store it, all those sort of things. Most of the rules and laws, it seems, were not written with civilians in mind, like people would never think they'd own them. I guess because lots of these were written before people realised on eBay people could just buy, you know, whatever they wanted. Hopefully some of them enjoy the videos, Rumbo. Um, but yeah, so how it would work is basically with the um, kind of, you know, most of the rules and laws, they're all for businesses, not for individual people. That's just how they wrote them. So if you're looking at the laws, especially trying to understand legalese as a civilian, it seems lots of the stuff isn't illegal as long as you're not doing stupid shit with it, which I think is generally good with most laws, you know, for things like, you know, you're allowed to own this as long as you don't blatantly, you know, harm other people with it, you know, that kind of thing. Um, oh, yeah, they're Myra. That's why memory alpha. There is no difference. It's Myra overcharging as usual. But um, yeah, so that's as far as I can understand it with UK laws. Basically, it doesn't say you can't own this, you can't own that if you're a civilian, not a business. It's just I think about properly storing it, not being an idiot with it, you know, um, not contaminating other people and that. No, I don't have the black therapy planes. I've just got the therapy plus, and I said I like this, other than the fact that, you know, unless you keep it in a plastic container all the time, not container, but, you know, like a little plastic bag, um, it's quite easy to get contaminants inside of it. You know, like on the Geiger Muller tube or just underneath it or whatever, um, and then find it very hard to get them out. And you have to break, like I've broken my factory warranty, because you might be able to see there, there's the warranty sticker. To open the case up, to clean it, you have to break the warranty. Um, so, you know, it's not the most well-designed Geiger in that regard. Yeah, as Plane says, 100 plus. I don't even know the number anymore. But yeah, so from my understanding of all the British nuclear type laws for owning radioactive items is don't be a fucking idiot with them, basically. Because I imagine this is where a law could certainly get written in if somebody, you know, bought a load of stuff like that and then just spilled it everywhere. Um, so, for example, because um, what was interesting, although I struggled to find the guy's original video, not the fucker that re-uploaded his video without permission, has a lot more views than the original. There's a guy who has like a really big radioactive museum in the UK um, who has like, you know, loads and loads of old radium artifacts, different types of crystals, you know, and all that that are radioactive. And I think he said in one of the comments because somebody said, oh, aren't the police, you know, after you for this. And I think he literally said just in, you know, the comment, he explained it. He's like, you know, he was the police did come and speak to him. But, you know, when he demonstrated them that it's all stored properly, you know, no radiation is leaving his property due to inverse square or how he stores it, you know. He has a radon extractor running, you know, the police were completely satisfied because obviously he's not doing it to harm anybody else. He just likes collecting old radioactive curiosities. But for museums, this is where it's a lot more strict, because, for example, museums have lots more rules about displaying just things like radium watches in a cabinet, because if you're a member of the public, let's say there's 100 radium watches in a cabinet the gamma dose you might be receiving will be higher than background. Therefore, the museum is putting people at risk. Therefore, the museum is, you know, in more trouble. Ah, oh, cool. Which, um... Do you know what the name of it is, Planes? Obviously, if you're wanting to buy it, um, and there's only one left in stock, don't necessarily say, but I wouldn't mind having a look at it and see, telling you what I think. All right, Rajiv? I'm, I'm glad you're still around because people were wondering a while ago had you been blocked. I was looking at my block list. I said, Rajiv's not on there, but we haven't seen you in a while. So I'm, I'm glad you're all right and you're on. Um, you just hadn't been on for a while. You can't send a link, Pete, uh, planes, but can you just copy and paste the name? Uh, certainly incompetent, Blacknesh. That's, that's a nice way of putting it, I think, incompetent. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you're all right, though. But yeah, people have been asking after you. Um, you know, a lot of people thought you'd been blocked by accident. I was looking into the block list. And I was like, no, I can't see you on there. Mm. 
That's, yeah, that's all right, Roger. If it's just because you were on a lot of the streams, then when you weren't on, people were wondering where you were. Uh, the Imperial War Museum in London has got a really good collection. Bovington Tank Museum, I'd actually recommend even more. Because Bovington Tank Museum, or I think it's just called the Tank Museum now, um, that's, I think, the second biggest collection of tanks in the world in the museum. And they're like, they keep them all in like running condition, if possible, at Bovington Tank Museum. So that's where they've got like a Tiger II that can actually be driven around, you know. So now and again, they'll have a day where they'll actually, you know, drive some of the tanks in a field so you can witness things like Tiger tanks and all that still driving around. Um, but Bovington's got, you know, World War One tanks in there, lots and lots and lots of World War II tanks and tank destroyers and that sort of stuff and loads of Cold War stuff. So they've got a massive collection of, you know, um, they've also got an S8 gas mask there, which is really rare, which is quite nice, just in a cabinet. And um, Briggs said, Solway Aviation Museum in Cumbria for aircraft is good. Uh, RAF Hendon's very good. They've got one of the two surviving Stuckers in the world, the RAF Hendon. Um, yeah, there's, there's quite a lot of good military museums in the UK, in all honesty. The nearest museum to me that has an OK military section in it but it's free entry and they've got lots of other interesting stuff there is um, the pit rivers um, because the pit rivers museum is in the Oxford. Um, it's called the something like natural history museum. I think I'm trying to remember the full name of it, but the pit rivers was like a guy's private collection, you know, like a kind of colonial explorer type thing. And the top floor of the pit rivers is full of stuff like samurai, samurai armor, rifles, crossbows, all that sort of stuff. Um, so that's one that's not very far from me. So that you know, every year or so, I decide to actually go into Oxford and look at it. Cause Oxford's a bit of a shit at times. Um, but you know, the actual Pitt Rivers Museum is excellent. Um, who was it saying about activated charcoal? I missed the comment. I think. Um, oh, Rolanda said, "Do you put activated charcoal in your radium storage container? It really helps radium emissions." I have done that before, and then measured the charcoal to see if I could get readings on it. But to be honest, I might do more of that in all honesty. Um, what I'll do after payday is probably buy a massive load of activated charcoal, um, you know, like the aquarium stuff. And then I might do a video, well, I will do a video of basically getting an ammo box, putting that charcoal at the bottom, putting some lead sheeting in, using, you know, a load of um, either paper or um, bubble wrap type stuff to keep the samples pretty much dead in the center of the container as possible um you know to minimize inverse square law exposure and i'll do um you know a video showing kind of how to safely set up a storage container what i do with my containers though is when i open them i don't open them indoors i take them outdoors open them so radon can vent outdoors because they're airtight containers and then you know take them back indoors oh you sent the geiger um it's called right let me let me google that then DKG. Let's have a look. Oh, that is interesting. So it's made by EcoTest, who make the Terra P. Ooh, I did not know about this one. What does the screw bit on the front do? Or is that for the battery? Um. But yeah, so it looks very similar to a Terra P. It just looks a lot sturdier. Yeah, that does look nice. I'd say go flat over the therapy. It's made by EcoTest that make the therapy. So it's going to basically be just a better therapy, I think. But um, yeah, it does look good. Yeah, I'm going to add to my watch list as much as I shouldn't be buying it now. Um, you know, that, that's very interesting. There's one I will recommend to you. Uh, it's not logging me in because eBay.com. There is one I'll recommend to you, um, Planes. Let me go get it. It's in the other room. But they're ones where it, when they turn up for decent prices, I definitely recommend them. Just a second. These ones looks nice, so hype, doesn't it? But this thing, um, which is 
the MGP Instruments DMC-2000S. This is, I think, the highest range of all my Geiger counters. This one apparently goes up to, like, over 9 sieverts. Um, but it shows you both a cumulative dose. So you can see there it's, um, if that's the right way up, basically 21 micro sieverts have logged on this one since I last reset it. Um, it shows you dose rate, although it has to be 10 micro sieverts or more to show up on there for some reason. But yeah, the and they take some sort of like lithium coin sort of battery on these. Um, you can if you want to, ban Parkour. But yeah, these are very, very good when they turn up on UK eBay for like the 30 to 50 pound price range. Because these are like kind of, you know, very similar high quality modern... Um, let me see for you planes, if there's or any of the other viewers, if you're interested in any of those or working ones of these are currently listed. Because as I said, there's ones like that where often they're like the best price Geigers you can find on UK eBay. Also, for anybody interesting, I bought something very nerdy the other day. Um, I bought a um, Alpha Draw radiation detector scintillation counter. It's where it's like a scintillator mounted to a drawer that you can put, you know, alpha samples in. To measure with a scintillator or whatever. I thought that was like a really, really um nerdy thing, but I they were fairly cheap because it was like obviously a lab selling off their old stock of them. Um but yeah, what was I gonna type in? Um let's do Geiger counter and then let's set the price range from twenty-five to sixty pounds and see what comes up. Um Oh, planes, if you're interested in old military ship, there's something very, very well priced at the moment that you'll you'll struggle to get a reading on it. I've still got my ECBA armor. It's behind me somewhere. Um, but there's a Plessy PDRM-82. Um, the only issue of the... This is actually a decent price rather than when these used to... Some load of sellers wanted like 200 quid for them. Um, that's a good price for a Plessy, actually. But... Yeah, the um, there's the MD three meters for um, thirty five to fifty quid. I was seeing if any of those pages style decimeters are on here at a good price. There's actually some really interesting old Russian and like Soviet industry Geigers turning up now on there. Um, after payday, if some of these are still on there for like 30 quid, I might buy a load of them just to see how good they are. But I uh, can't. Um, sadly, I can't see any of those pages style ones up at the moment, but they. I already said I still have the ECB armor. Um, outbreak, as you said, um, contagion. Um, the crazies, if you want more of um, a science fiction y one. Um, I'm trying to think of any others. You've put me on the spot now, 28 days later. It depends which one, Peter, because there's loads of different radiacs. I mean, th this one's like a very small one. That's actually a little iron chamber, not a Geiger in there. But... Shaun of the Dead, yeah, I suppose that's a virus movie, isn't it? Just a zombie virus. Ah, oh, sounds a good idea, Massimo. So yeah, you're doing it, I assume, but yeah. Get the Thermos thing, and then... Yeah, you get a bigger one and the smaller one, and then you pour molten lead, I assume, into the gap, and then when it dries... Or you just put loads of blocks of lead. Yeah, you've um good idea. Alright, cool. I think that's a little Geiger, isn't it, PT? Yeah, but that's cool. All right, Vigil. Um No, um Rap Gods, that's how I store my stuff. I keep it in the gun safe, but in those container boxes. Um, because the nice thing the container box is if you get ones with the good rubber seals on the ammo boxes, it traps radon and stuff like that inside, so it's not you know leaking into your house. And the ammo boxes, because they're generally quite thick steel or aluminium, they should stop most of the beta radiation from samples coming out. Uh, and plane says Terra MKS05 is a modern Terra P plus. 
But isn't MKSO5 like just a serial number thing for them? Because if this wants to focus, see it says that on this this one. Decimeter, uh, whatever it says, radio meter MKSO5. Yeah, it says that. Is RD something to do with oil? I can't remember actually what the RD is on the Nabec type thing. Oh, you're pouring on. Didn't Cody's lab do a video like that before the um, FBI came and knocking? But yeah. Oh, you found one, have you, Mob? Let me show you a comment. Sake Geiger counter. Da -da 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 -da. Let's Google it and see if it's a good price. But yes, Sake ones are the ones. Uh, uh, oh, for parts or not working, uh, sadly. That that's the ones I bought where I bought a load like this where there's all different things wrong with them If it's just literally the battery things missing then that's fine But a lot of them have broken screens and that on them But they're worth harvesting the Geiger tubes from them if you get them cheaply um, I don't know apparently they put out Peter, but I don't know if any more have started But the problem is obviously that yeah, it doesn't just go away once you put the fire out um silicon lubricant jim but yeah the um where did i put it the other day yeah there it is i put some insulation tape on it but yeah the um geiger muller tubes hanging by their straps bam in sunlight that's the worst way to store a gas mask uh let's let's have a look then gmac Polish DP11B. I don't even know that guy counter, but let's have a look at it. It needs an 80 volt battery, does it? Oh, that might be that might be pretty uh, difficult. When I'm googling that, I'm just getting stuff of DP5s come up. But um, ah, oh, cool. Yeah, that. Oh, that's a really retro looking thing. How big is the battery compartment? Because that might be a problem. <clears throat> you know, if you've only got a small battery compartment. Um, I mean, what you can always do is daisy chain loads of batteries together to get it up to 80 volts. That's one way of doing it, but it's a bit, you know, a bit inefficient. What I've got is, um, oh, it's a huge compartment at least. Well, that's something, I guess. You might be able to daisy chain loads of batteries together then. Um, how I personally um, power a lot of things is, uh, let me hold it up and show you. I need to get it because it's plugged in, but... Um, I'll just pull the plate out the back and then I can hold it up. This only does 60 um, volt, but this is what I use when testing lots of old radiological equipment, is this thing. Um, you can buy these on Amazon for various prices. They're more expensive the higher voltage and amps they go up to. Basically, how these work, you connect the uh, cables to something, and then, you know, you dial them up slightly, and it would read give you a voltage readout. You dial them up to the volts you're meant to run them at. And then, you know, you're good to go. Um, but what I did earlier was this is what I used with this thing to start with before putting batteries in. You know, I got this on and then slowly while holding the test button or the read button, it was the read button, wasn't it? Um, dialed it up, you know, so I could see exactly where the needle was wanting to sit on what voltage. Um, um, with modern masks, bam, stuff like polycarbon is better. With old masks... Um, you know, glass is a lot better than the very early plastics. Uh, Massimo says external PSU is one option, but to keep it portable, you can pair a rechargeable battery, even lifting with the appropriate module to manage it and boost conversion. He sounds exactly like he knows what he's talking about more than me. So I, I'd say listen to Massimo there. Um, that's the thing, like, I'm not really all that into electronics. I'm into electronics enough to, you know, try and get old stuff working to a very beginner level. But a lot of it does go over my head, but... Uh, no problem, GMAC. Hopefully you find something that works. Um, he's, Peter says, at my grandma's house, I have NBC equipment from the Cold War era because my grandpa was the Secret Service. The question is, which model is the guy counter brown Romanian words on it in Soviet and big? Is it a DP5 type 1, Peter? Uh, let me show you what they look like. DP5B guy again. If I get, for example, a picture of a DP5B up, I've done a video on one on the channel before. Um, depends when you say big, how big you mean. Um, but for example, this is a DP5B um, 
Geiger counter. That was one of the Soviet mass-produced ones. So had, they had like bake light cases. Later on, they had the green plastic cases. Um, there's also like Polish DP sixty sixes, DP seventy fives. Um, the DP sixty three Geigers are also kind of a similar design. These are actually a bit more compact because everything runs off of the. Um, You know, like internal chamber, but oh, that's cool. It says a DP5, is it? But yeah, DP5s are pretty mass produced. They were like the Soviet Union's main Geiger counter. But yeah, DP63s are a cool design. It does strike me, though, in the Cold War, it seems weird that so many nations didn't just come up with this idea of putting, like, you know, this thing. A little iron chamber or a little Geiger Muller tubes inside a thing that you just wore around your neck with a strap or, you know, that went on your... Wow, oh, surely it was possible. Oh, well. Wow. You know. So is anybody doing anything interesting today during lockdown? I'm not. I'm basically today, um, you know, I'll get a video filmed a bit later. Um, so I'm doing the stream now. I wanted to do a stream really sort of earlier today rather than later today because I'm doing stuff this evening, you know, so I didn't want to try and juggle a stream around it. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm not. Um, Gretchen studying. GS Electric, so he's just going insane. I think we all um, we all feel a bit like that at the moment. Oh, let's have a look at that one then. The planes, Russian PKC twenty three decimeter, three point six Rondon. I still really want to get a DP two iron chamber. Um, oh, I've seen that one before. Yeah, I've I've never used one, but I know I've seen loads of videos of people using them. Um. How much are they on eBay? But yeah, they're, they're quite an iconic looking design. So they've got all the little switches on the front. I didn't want to see all the fencing. I wanted what you'd put in, please. Yeah, um, uh, it's just coming out with fake eyelashes when I put that into eBay, sadly. But yeah, I do know the one you mean now, planes. I, I think that's probably quite good. All right, William, hope you enjoy your stay, or Will, Will as, sorry. I keep wanting to say your name is William. Yeah, again, planes, it depends. Um, oh, is that the one you use, Hype? Ah, cool. Arsenal and Peach, you got twatted by the bowstring, did you? Don't know what that is, 666. Jet, was there some idiot just shooting guns in public? Oh, you are William. Cool, I'll call you William then. But yeah, there's, there's a lot of choices when it comes to Geiger counters. Again, it depends what range you want to use them on. Um, I think I might have heard something about that 666 uh, jet on um, LBC earlier when I was just flicking through stuff and listened to LBC for like 10 minutes. Um, but yeah, again, with Geigers, it depends on like other radioactive measurement things. It depends what ranges you want to look at and everything, because it's hard to just recommend one model for everybody. You know, but because it depends on price range and then what ranges you want to look at. Because with lots of people, if you just wanted to measure background radiation and above background, lots and lots and lots of Geigers that are available would be fine. The issue is, I think, um, you know, if you're then wanting to check certain samples of them, that's when you find, oh, this Geiger counter suddenly overloads at ranges it shouldn't overload at, you know, and all that sort of stuff. So Massimo says, here in Italy, they will announce the plan of phase two in early May. Hopefully people resume the floor. Is that like relaxing of lockdown? But yeah, you have to hope people follow it, don't they, and not make it worse for everybody. That's interesting. I 
for one of my bows, Peach, I've got one of those like leathery kind of plasticky arm braces that you know do that because yeah, I've got a bow that twats me on the arm every time I pull it back. So yeah, I have to use uh, that one with a. Uh... No, I do not have an Indian Army gas mask. What what gas mask does the Indian Army currently use? Something they've bought off of Russia? I don't actually know. Oh, what's what's the problem with your rate uh, rate meter? Is that your MD3, Connor? Oh, the oh the actual rate meter. You mean like the uh, one of these? What what issue are you running into? What Geiger Muller tube are you trying to put on it? Uh, the one I've used, Jim, and it is actually a proper silicon lubricant, so I just recommend this Draper one because it's one that I've used and it works. Is this one? So Draper silicon lubricant. Because this is actually one that doesn't have anything in it, as far as I can tell, that actually degrades rubbers. Because um, I had to do a bit of research when I first bought one, because I was using it on air gun seals. And you have to be really careful that you don't get one with additives that then damages the seals. Um, Quentin says he just received the British Army gas mask bag and MTP camo for my Fashade uh, A4 mask, and I'd like to know if that is information concerning washing. It's quite smelly. What is in washing the bag? Um, without having anything in the bag, just put it in the washing machine on like the lowest temperature with a bit of detergent, and it should be fine. They're just like nylon y kind of fabric bags, the um, British bags, that'd be fine. Yes, Massimo, the video's on tomorrow. Uh, I don't want to say too much about it beforehand, because I was thinking, oh, should I do that video after having the CVRM police visit me? But yeah, uh, using inverse square lore, I got loads and loads of radium dials, etc. Surrounded the iron chamber with it, and on the um, point 0.1 scale, I did make the needle move. And move enough that it wasn't a fluke, you know, and I did it with two of my CDV 715s. Ah, uh, the F X and French Geiger MT. Is that the ones I've got? Because I know some of those are higher range tubes, as in that for not background radiation levels. Is it these? The ones that come in here? If, if it's one of these, I think I know what your problem is. Because these tubes, as far as I'm aware, these French ones, because I bought a few to mess about with it, the experiments. Um, if it came in a thing like this, I think the problem you're probably running into is actually these are not for background radiation. They're sort of mid to high range Geiger Muller tubes. It's the reason I kind of keep recommending either Soviet SBM 20 tubes or like the Chinese glass tubes. Because these tubes, because they're for higher radiation ranges, I think the problem you're having is that because, you know, it's essentially you need quite a lot of radiation to start making them tick. Um, why didn't it's a free eight? Let me let me Google it then, Connor, and see if I can find out anything about that tube. Yeah, that is these. It's just, this is with the plastic packaging around it. Let me, I've got one of them open somewhere, but yeah, they're not great for the rate meter, I'm afraid. You're going to want to, I think, just get an SBM20 tube for it. Um, where did I put that Geiger Muller tube? That's what I want to know. I can't see it handily, but... Yeah, the point is that... Some tubes like this, because, for example, it's a bit like this Polish Dob 50 tube. They're not designed for measuring low levels of radiation. They're for quite high levels of radiation. Yeah, let me let me post a link, Connor, to one I'd actually recommend, just because I think you'll have no issues with it then. Um, going back to the Soviets, the tubes I always recommend are the rate meters, weirdly, and these end up just being some of the best tubes still around. The Soviet SBM-20 tubes. Sadly, Massimo, over here, they're not cheap just because um, you have to get them imported from the States. But I like them as a collector's item. But yeah, um, let me link you to one, Connor. But yeah, 
these work because I've tried them on a few rate meters. As long as your rate meter works, these will work absolutely fine if you wire them up. Um, but yeah, the issue is the French tubes are actually not for background radiation. They're, um, let me get you a link to one up. Um, yeah, the in general, I found little glass Geiger tubes are generally uh, for much higher than background. A bit like the Soviet um, SI3BG tubes, because I bought a load of those quite cheaply to use the rate meter, and then found that again, you'd ha I'd have to have like radium right next to it to actually get those to tick. Um, there, there was a UK seller. I'm going to see if he still has some in, because if the UK seller still has some in. Um, this one might work, by the way. This wasn't the one I was looking for, but this actually looks like it might be quite a good one. So there's that one for you. But um, let me find the one I actually was going to recommend, an SBM20 tube. There was a UK seller that had some in, and he was charging quite a good price for them. You know, and he got them to me within like three days of me ordering one, which was really good. Um... Sadly, I don't know if that seller's still around or, you know, if he's got any left. But, um, right, the cheapest I can find you one. Um, apparently it's free postage, so maybe it's worth buying a few of these. Is this one. That's, that's the SBM-20. And I said SBM-20s were the standard tubes that literally all the Soviet Geigers used for the low range of radiation. So these were for, you know, like the milli Ronken range. Um, once you get to, you know, like maybe a quarter of a ronk and half a ronk, then these tubes overload a bit, but, um, for that range, they're fine. But yeah, these are the, um, you know, these are good tubes for what they are. Um, what I could recommend you though, is it would require a bit of DIY work, but if you want to use the rate meter to actually detect alpha radiation sources, you should be able to wire up without um, much issue. Let me find it for you. The uh, let me find one. One of these. I've got a couple of these on order, so I can't confirm to you until they arrive that they work fine. But they should work absolutely fine. These, which are uh, Alpha Mica Soviet tubes. These should power fine on the rate meter um, because they need a high voltage because it's, if you read on there, it says it needs 1600 to 1750 volts. But you can certainly dial a rate meter if you mess about with it to probably that voltage because the rate meters can go up to like two kilovolt. Um, but yeah, they're... they're um, that sort of thing. There's there's a few other Soviet alpha mica tubes as well that I think run on lower voltages, but what about this one? Um, I haven't bought any of these, but this might be an interesting one. Have a look at this one. Um, SI19 BGM. It's a very small Geiger tube, so that would sit quite neatly out the front of the rate meter if you sort of soldered it on there. Um, that one runs at 360 to 440 volts, so that would probably be quite good. It says it maxes at 900 Ronken an hour, but I don't know what the minimum thing is for it. There's sites, I think, that have massive of info on um, old Geiger tubes. You know, SBM20 is the ones you want for um, most of the stuff. But yeah, with the um, French one. Does it say... Um, it does say it responds from fields from 0 0.0001 uh, Ronkens, but... That's like one milliront gun. But I'm just looking on there. Um, should run at 445 volts. What I will do for you on Discord, if you remind me to later, just when I'm bored, um, war drop, is 
I'll see if I can get that French tube working on one of these, but I found it didn't work all that well on there. Some Geigers just don't seem to like certain things, because like I said, I've got loads of the Soviet SI 3BG tubes, but they're for very high ranges. But in, in theory, they'll run on there, but yeah, the Soviet SBM20 tubes are far nicer, really, for just, you know, like a DIY kind of project. Is there a date stamped on it, Richard? I mean, if it's plastic, it's going to be fairly modern plastic casing. If it's metal casing, it's harder to know. Stelio is Israeli M15. I consistently get a massive headache every time I wear it after 40 minute large head. Um, you're going to want one probably with more adjustable straps and maybe softer things, but it's hard to say without taking proper head measurements for yourself. But I think the problem with your M15 is you're probably tightening it too hard and it's putting tension on your skull. Uh, sadly, as I've already said, um, Quentin, I don't have any kits for him, so I can't do a video unless I get a kit, really. It depends how you're wanting to do it, Massimo, but rate meters are literally designed so you can put two wires on them and run them. Because they were just designed so you could quickly just attach anything you wanted to them. That's why they're a lab type thing. It's not like you're getting a Soviet, you know, one and then just putting a custom probe on it. These let you set the high voltage on there. And again, yeah, you want to check the voltage it's telling you it's running at is the correct thing. But yeah, these are dirt cheap in the UK, which is why a lot of people like them for DIY projects. But yeah, I'll be off in a minute, but thanks everyone that's been on. It's been an all right chat this morning. There's not been lots of where can I get GP5 kind of spam or repent Jesus is coming like the other day. Yeah, but you might just need a completely different mask then, Stelio. But, um, yeah, we'll drop. When I, when I remember after the stream, I might just listen to LBC and do it as a quick DIY project in a minute. Uh, I'll, I'll let you know if I get any luck with that French tube again. Um, but like I said, it should be, in theory, completely possible. Tom says I need to repent. Okay. Where did I put the other rate meter? I thought I had another spare one. Then. Unless I've actually packed them away properly. Might have even done that. Yeah. I don't think you were causing too many problems, Brendan. It's just more when I keep getting constant spam. Thank you very much, Chris. Um, he said the SBT9 and SBT11 are good alpha tubes. Let's have a look at those. Um, before I go off, SBT9, SBT11. Ah, oh, yeah, I remember looking at the um, SBT9. I didn't end up getting one, but yeah, they look all right. Um... They look like, yeah, they'd be quite simple to actually run in a circuit. Again, like whoever it was was saying, you need to get the voltage all completely set up correctly in that. But um, if you're on something like a rate meter, that should be pretty straightforward. They actually look fairly robust as well, because the problem with some alpha mica tubes is they look really, really fragile. Uh, there's lots of people doing them in like Arduino setups as well. That's kind of interesting. But yeah, thank you. SBT9s then look like a very good choice. Worst cheek filter mask brand than the reviewer. Check M10 maybe. I would say the Chinese M65, but then when I got it, I actually thought it was a lot better than I thought it would be. You know, the tumor mask. There are different thread rigs, so you can force the wrong filter onto, you know, a mask, but it's not recommended. All right, Mike. I'm off in a minute or so, I'm afraid, if you've just come on. Rajiv was on today, though, Mike. Um... So he's still around. Hello, L L uh, sorry, eleven H H H thirty. For those of you that didn't see it earlier, got one of these, and it's all working now with batteries bodged in to be close enough to the original voltage.
Yeah, he wasn't blocked. He just said he's not been on, Mike. And that was all it was. Wow, Brandon, I can't show him on YouTube anymore because the rules on live streams. You can show him in videos, not on streams. It's the reason the end field is generally always cut off as well with how I've got the framing and streams. But yeah, YouTube just randomly changed the rules on firearms, you know, rifles and things like that in live streams. Right, I'll be off in a minute now, but thanks everybody that's been on. Like I said, it's been a good stream today, just in terms of people having a friendly conversation, helping each other out, rather than being random spam. I have noticed recently, for some reason, when I stream about this time of day, it's a lot more like calm, nice streams. Whereas in the evening, it's when you get all the spam sort of questions over and over and over again, and the weirdos, you know, trying to post political points or whatever. Right, Tom, legality of broadheads is you're allowed to have them in the UK, um, but you're not allowed to hunt with them just as you can't hunt with any sort of arrow, sort of bow hunting type thing. But lots of people think they're illegal because you're not allowed to hunt in, like, bow hunt in the UK. So therefore they think broadheads are illegal. They're not. But for most people, they're completely impractical. I have a Swedish um, Type 32, whatever it's called. I like the Falk gas mask, whatever it's called. Uh, which is that civilian one, and I've got a uh, for shader, however it's pronounced, A4. Yeah, if you're wanting to learn about radiation stuff, Tom, um, I think the 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 niche is trying to find someone that's a physicist that will actually explain it sensibly in easy terms to normal people like us. Because you tend to have a radiation false information where people try and make it easy to understand, but then they actually lie. Um, and then you've got the other thing of people that are like physicists so up their own ass, they're not going to go, oh, if you can't understand it, I'm not going to explain it simply. So what you have to do is try and find people that kind of learn about it and then explain it to a layman's degree and i know a few people like that who are really nice about it you know where they'll they'll basically say right i'll try and break this down for you and keep it as accurate as possible but as easy to understand as possible not off the top of my head tanner cemetery man's a really good film della morte della more has nothing to do with um contagion type stuff uh shit brandon the, the old straps for it were good, the new ones are shit. I'll probably film a video on this fairly soon. I think that's what I'll do straight after the stream, actually, is get a video filmed on this, and I'll see if I can get it to uh, read with some check sources. Because because the bottom end of this scale is um, 20 milli ronkgen, that shouldn't be too hard to get that to move the needle on it. Whereabouts is, oh, the, um, I'll have a quick look before we go on, the one that went on today, the video. Has a serial number on it. The serial number's surprisingly high, so they must have made a lot of these, 58711, but they've not circled it or, like, ticked off any of the things. I assume it's completely unissued. There you go, Steve. That's the thing. I took the batteries out of this now because, you know, I can't really power it. But it's an interesting old device. But like I said, sort of, you know, it's just a shame so many of these use odd, obsolete batteries and they're still hard to even power from a bench thing because of how the contacts are done on them. These ones weren't GS. These were... um portable radiax. Um, they were for civil defense things. If you see behind me, there's a Mark II radiac. Um, the idea was that they were much lighter, sort of, whoop, there goes the battery cap. The idea were they were much more, um, you know, like much more portable versions of those. The idea was that like with that, you could have a strap around it and you could wear it around your neck like that and look down and take a reading. Um, but yeah, they didn't, see most of them are called AVO meters. 
if you search something like Avo Mark IV Radiac, Steve, you'll find um, more info on them. But yeah, for some reason, like I say, and this one isn't an Avo one, so it's got a different number on that, even though it's a very similar device. But, but yeah, it's, it's an interesting thing, isn't it? But um, like I said, there's just not much information on British Geigers and all that stuff around. Um, which is a bit of a shame because it seems it's one of those underdeveloped things. That's why when I get stuff now, I'll try and do videos documenting as many of the labels and everything on them as possible for people who want to look into them a bit more. Um, what do you mean, Kit, and how should you add radiation to your game? Uh, unless it's extreme levels, people don't become ill from it straight away. But I suppose in most video games, people don't want to know about cancer risks 20 years down the line, do they? So, Which particular thing, Tom? I, I was meant to be going off, but if you're on about those, um, I very rarely see, see them because I can't even give you a price estimate. Uh, you know. Yeah, and you'll end up on a watch list, stop it, I think. Ask the Russians, look up Alexander Litvinenko. We put some polonium in your tea, comrade. Um, but yeah. I'll, I'll be off now because, um, as I said, I've gone on longer than I thought I'd go on and I need to get a video done on this. But a Giga counter, do you mean a Giga counter? Um, depends which model you're on about. Again, there's a lot, I've got lots of Giga counters, but. Right, see you everybody, have a good day, see you Gretchen, thanks all the mods, Peach and everybody else, Mike, anybody that's been on the modding, um, because we have had some weirdos on earlier, but for most of the stream it's actually been really nice, but you know, have a good day everybody, see you Hype and everybody else that's been on, thanks to uh, the one person that donated, I appreciate it, and um, you know, everybody else, thank you, um, I won't be on... Uh, tonight, as said, because I wanted to do a stream earlier today, so um, I could kind of have the evening off and not worry about trying to get a stream in, you know, with other stuff going on in the house, but uh, if you're on Twitch, Mike, I will be on that later on, though. But, yeah, see ya. I've already done a video on it, learn how to search my channel. Right, see everybody. I'll be off. Goodbye.